Number 11 says find the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So we're going to take the highest degree on top and take that whole term and put it over the highest degree term on bottom. And we're going to simplify what we can. We can take both of those x's with 2 on top. It leaves us with 3. A 3 will go into 6 twice. So we have negative 2x cubed. If I were to put negative infinity in right there, negative infinity cubed, multiplying 2 to infinity just is very insignificant, and the 2 will just basically be obliterated by it. Raising a negative to a cube power right there is going to make it stay negative. So I have negative times negative, which is going to give me positive infinity for this limit. Number 12 says, on what intervals are the following functions continuous? Use interval notation. So our first one is a log. You can only, the domain for logs is you can only take the log of a positive number. You can't take log of 0, you can't take log of a negative number. And so I'm going to set 3 minus 7x greater than 0. It cannot equal 0 either. So if I add 7x to both sides, I get 3 is greater than 7x, and divide both sides by 7, and I'll get 3 sevenths is greater than x, or I could look at it as x needs to be less than 3 sevenths. And so it can go from negative infinity all the way up to 3 sevenths, but not equal 3 sevenths. That is where it's continuous. Part B is a polynomial, and polynomials are continuous everywhere. So it's continuous from negative infinity to infinity. Part C is an even-rooted radical. And we cannot have negatives underneath an even-rooted radical. So I'm going to set my 9x plus 2 greater than or equal to 0. It's okay to have the square root of 0. You just can't have or the fourth root of zero. You just can't have the fourth root of a negative number. So subtracting my two to the other side, and then dividing by nine, I get that x needs to be greater than or equal to negative two ninths. So I'm going to have bracket here because it can equal two ninths, and then it needs to be greater than it. And then part D is an exponential equation. Exponential equations are continuous everywhere. So it would be continuous from negative infinity to infinity. Number 13. It says use the limit definition of derivative to find the derivative for this function. So the first thing I'm going to do is write out the limit definition of derivative. That's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So f of x plus h, this part right here, is the tricky part on this problem. The second part, f of x, that was given to us. So we'll just put that function in when we get there. But I'm going to come down to the bottom and do some scratch work. And I'm going to put x plus h in for x. So f of x plus h, everywhere there's an x, I'm going to replace it with x plus h. And so I get this. Okay, so that wasn't so tricky. <laughs> Stay with me now. It'll get tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and come back up here and put that in. So I have 4 plus 5 over x plus h. Then minus f of x, which was given to us, so minus 4 plus 5 over x, and then that's all over h. Now I'm going to distribute this negative on top. So I have the limit as h goes to 0. I have to keep writing that until I can actually plug in 0. A 4 minus 5 over x plus h minus 4 minus 5 over x, all over h. I can cancel out the 4's. 
So now I have the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 5 over x plus h minus 5 over x. And that's all over h. So now is where it gets tricky. We need to get a common denominator just for the numerator part of this. So I have x plus 5 on one side, x on the other side. So I'm going to multiply this side by x plus h over x plus h. And over here, I'll multiply this by x over x. And so I'll have the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 5x over x times x plus h minus 5 times x plus h over x times x plus h. And that's all still over h. So now I have a common denominator. I'm going to erase my scratch work there. So I can combine the top part because I have a common denominator. So I'm going to write the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 5x minus, this is going to be 5x times 5 a, plus 5h, so minus 5x, and then the negative also distributes, minus 5h, all over x times x plus h. And that's all over h. Okay, so this is where I know I've done something wrong which you might have already figured out where I did something wrong. But it's good that I did something wrong, because this is helpful. If you were to do something wrong and you get to this step, you should know you did something wrong, because all you should have left on the very top part are h terms. And I have negative 5x minus 5x. They should have canceled out. So if I go back up to my top line, I notice there was a plus sign right there, and then I turned it into a negative sign right there. Just magically, I have no idea why. So I'm going to return it to the plus sign it's supposed to be. And then we are where we want to be. We have positive 5x minus 5x, which will cancel. And so I have the limit as h goes to 0. On top, I have negative 5h over x times x plus h. On the bottom, I have h over 1. We can multiply this by 1 over h. Dividing by h is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over h. And we do it that way because it's easier to see how those can cancel out now. Now that I have that h canceled, I can plug 0 in for my h. And so I'm going to have negative 5 on top. And on bottom, I'm going to have x times x plus 0. And so I end up with negative 5 over x squared. Number 14 it says, for what intervals is this function continuous? So if I look at my individual functions over here, that's a polynomial, polynomial, polynomial. Those are continuous everywhere, so I don't have to worry about them. What I need to worry about is where this function is being pieced together right here. I don't know if it's continuing through those intervals or if there's a big gap and a hole and stuff like that. So the ones I really need to check right now would be x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. And again, that's because that's where it's being pieced together right here. And so what do I need to check on these? In order for a function to be continuous, the first thing that has to happen is the limit as x approaches 2 for this function needs to exist. The second thing that needs to happen is f of 2 needs to exist. And the third thing that needs to happen is the limit as x approaches negative 2 of the function must equal f of 2. In other words, part 1 must equal part 2 for this. So the first thing I will do is find the limit. So 
Finding the limit, I need to look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. And those are x values that are greater than 2. So I'm going to use my top equation here, because that says for x greater than 2. If I put a 2 in for x, I get 3 times 4 is 12, minus 4 is 8. And then I need to check the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. And so those are values of x that are less than 2, which would be this middle function. So 6 minus 2 times 2 squared would be 6 minus 8, which is negative 2. And I can stop there. The limit from the right does not equal the limit from the left. So the limit does not exist. So I know it's not going to be continuous at x equals 2. And that is because the limit does not exist. But I now still need to check x equals negative 1. So I'm going to check the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right. So coming from the right of negative 1, those are x values that are greater than negative 1. So that would be this middle equation here. So plugging negative 1 in, I get 6 minus 2 times negative 1 squared gives me 6 minus 2, which is 4. And now I'll check the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left. So coming from the left, those are x values that are less than negative 1. So I'll have negative 5 times negative 1 minus 1. So that's 5 minus 1, which is 4. So since coming from the left and coming from the right equal the same thing, then for our first item to check here, the limit as x approaches negative 1 does exist, and it would be 4. The second thing we check is, does f of, 4, f of negative 1 exist? So looking at my equation, I've got to figure out which one would be where x equals negative 1, and that would be this middle equation right here. And so plugging negative 1 into that middle equation, I'd get 6 minus 2 times negative 1 squared is 4. So the limit exists, the function at that point exists, and the third thing I check are do those two equal each other? And yes, 4 does equal 4. So it is continuous at x equals negative 1. And so the question said, for what intervals is f of x continuous? Well, the only place it's not continuous is at x equals 2. And so we can say it's continuous from negative infinity to 2, and then again immediately after 2 to infinity. These are the intervals where it is continuous. Number 15 is almost identical to number 6. And so I'm just going to write on here, refer to number 6. It will pretty much sum up everything for you. Number 16 says, on what interval is f of x continuous? All right, so we need to worry about domain. We don't have an even-rooted radical to worry about or a logarithm to worry about. All we have is a denominator to worry about. So we, won't, we don't want our denominator to be 0. So I'm going to set the denominator equal to 0 and see what would cause that to happen. So I can take an x out of everything. Leaves me with x squared plus 6x minus 40. Then I'm going to factor this, and let's see, we can do x plus 10x minus 4, and so I have a product equal to 0. That means either x equals 0, or x plus 10 equals 0, which means x equals negative 10, or x minus 4 equals 0, 
which means x equals 4. So there's three places where this function is not continuous. So in order to write the interval where it is continuous, I'm going to take those three spots out. So negative infinity to 0, and then, oops, I guess I need to do negative 10. That's the furthest on the left. So I'm going to do negative infinity to negative 10, and then negative 10 to 0, and then 0 to 4, and then 4 to infinity. Number 17 it says, on which interval is this function continuous? Well, this one does not have a denominator. It does have an even-rooted radical, though, and we cannot have a negative underneath an even-rooted radical. So I'm going to set x squared plus 9x minus 36 greater than 0. It does not have to be greater than or equal to, because e square root of 0 is fine. We just don't want it to be negative. When I factor this, I get thinking with me here, x plus twelve x minus three. All right, and because it was a a square term here and we're factoring it, this sign all of a sudden becomes questionable. So I'm going to actually have to check out these terms. So I know the questionable spots are going to be wherever x plus 12 equals 0, which is at x equals negative 12, and wherever x minus 3 equals 0, which is at x equals 3. So this is where things are happening. So I'm going to make myself a number line. Here's negative 12, here's 3. And I'm going to see what's happening to the left and right of each of these values. The easiest one to check is x equals 0, which is between them. If I put a 0 in for x in this function, I would get the square root of 0 plus 0, negative 36, which we cannot have the square root of a negative. So it's not continuous there. If I were to put a number to the left of negative 12, say negative 15, into this equation, I would get a positive underneath the radical, which is fine. And if I were to put a number, any number, to the right of 3 in there, I would also get a positive number, which is fine. And so this function is going to be continuous from negative infinity to negative 12. And then again, oh, and that's going to be a closed bracket because it's okay if it equals negative 12. If it equals negative 12, it would just be the square root of 0, which is fine. And then from 3 to infinity, and 3 would also be a closed bracket for that one. Number 18 says the limit as x approaches 4. So the first thing we always try to do is plug 4 straight into the equation, and we actually can in this case. The only reason you would not be able to is if it causes a problem with a domain, but it does not. And so our limit would be negative 5 fourths. Number 19, the limit as x approaches negative infinity. I'm going to look for the highest degree on top and use that term, and the highest degree on bottom and use that term, and simplify. I'm able to cancel out cancel out the x cubes completely, so I'm left with 3 halves. There's nowhere to even plug negative infinity into, so that would be my limit right there.